Yo, 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 it's your man, the referee, back once again like the Renegade Master I am. I haven't done a video for a while. I think the last ones I uploaded were probably me being on the chase. Check them out if you're interested or not. They're like two hours of me jab jabbering on about what it was like to get on the chase. This video, on the other hand, is for uh, part of my tech gaming stuff. Now, you would have seen in a previous video, now I might be able to put a link somewhere, I've no idea where it will be, for the Evercade unboxing. Now, I don't know if you're aware or you remember, but the Evercade is a handheld console. Ta-da, look at that. Uh, things, oh look, there's me in the reflection. We're looking at Wayne's basement, but that's not Wayne's basement. Isn't that strange? Oh, do you know what? That's going to be really distracting if I keep that up there, but I might keep it up there anyway, see how long I can do it. So, yeah, I got myself the Evercade. Now, it is, there are a lot of generic handhelds out there at the moment. If you wanted to, you can get on eBay, 35 quid, 40 quid will buy you a Game Boy esque clone of. Be it the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, whatever it is, or there's, there's, or there's lots of options out there. And what they're designed is they just are stacked full of emulators. Generally, behind the scenes, you'll probably find some form of uh, retro arch or some uh, some retro pie type emulation setup, which will give you access to a ton of systems. And what happens is you go on the internet, you steal the original ROMs, load them on and you play them things to be aware on that is one they can have really shocking emulation some of them allow you to upload other emulators but others don't that is really weird <laughs> i still look at myself sorry in case you're wondering what i'm doing but others don't uh but they, they some are sold with two three four five thousand games but essentially what they've done is someone stole off the internet packaged them up in a way that's really easy to to use and you can, for 35 quid 40 quid 50 quid you can buy them or if you want to go for more advanced versions of that, £100, I think there's a new one out that will play some of the more recent uh, games. But they take up a lot of space. Once we moved over to CD-ROMs, DVDs, uh, games took up a lot of space. So uh, from a retro perspective, kind of, I've been trying, as you've seen from my podcast. Oh, there's my podcast details somewhere. Uh I've been collecting all my old games consoles. Now, what I have tried to do, or what I am doing, is trying to pick up the games as well. So, uh, I've got, uh, I've went out and bought Skitchin for the Mega Drive, which ha means a load to me from when I grew up. Uh, I need to pick up Goldeneye on the N64. Oof, that's going to cost me. Everyone wants Goldeneye. Uh, I've got Mario World Super Mario Kart on the uh, Net Super NES. Uh, and I've got Cruising USA on the N64, which uh, isn't popular f for lots of people, but uh, a really funny story that I'll say for my podcast. But yeah, so that that brings us up to, you've got a couple of options. You can buy one of these, uh, uh, buy one of these devices with the emulators built in, uh, not very expensive. Some will come with the ROM, some won't. But the thing is, nobody's getting paid apart from the person who makes the hardware and probably the person selling the item on eBay or Amazon. The people who made the ROMs, the, the developers and the people who own the intellectual property, they don't get paid on them. It's essentially as good as buying a hooky DVD from down the market. You're not funding the people that have made the thing, but you're going to benefit from it. So that's not something I really, really want to support. Uh, Oh, let's let's rephrase that. That's something that's not really a sustainable business model that I want to keep supporting. So I've moved away from that. He says incriminating self loads. Uh, I've moved away from that, and what I'm trying to do is get the stuff that I want. So I've bought the old hardware, all my old consoles back in the last two three years. But what I also fancied was something a bit different, and that brings us to the Evercade. There are loads of videos of the Evercade, so you will find tons of them. The The reason I want to do a separate video for this, though, oh, it's so many, so many reflective screens. Look at all that. Look at all that. Uh, so many reflective screens. Uh, the reason I want to do one for the Evercade is I was on the lookout for a thing to play games with, just like cheap and cheerful. And where I was struggling is... Unless you're quite into the indie scene, and I'm not into the indie gaming scene that much, 
it's quite hard to find legitimate games and legitimate stuff online. And when you look at what's being offered for the slightly dodgy versions, why is me again? Uh, slightly dodgy versions, they're offering hundreds and hundreds, or if not thousands of thousands of games. And, like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But do we really think there are thousands and thousands of games? I mean, 2,000 Game Boy games. I mean, it just doesn't sound right. But also, as a as an old gamer, I'm not really one who just wants to be a completist. You want the games that you're going to play. You don't want, like, some weird import version of a game that might be slightly different or some weird game that's never released over here. There's no point having that in the... And you've got to scroll through a th thousand, two thousand games? Oh, no, thank you. I am bored of that. So, back to the Evercade. Uh, Evercade, I think these are made by Blaze. He's just going to, yep, Blaze Entertainment, just check to the back. And uh, what's great about them is they have contacted the IP holders and started re releasing games for it. So, these are re releases. And some unreleased games uh I, I i'm not aware of any games that have been designed for this yet that is still freaky uh i'm not being aware of any games that have been designed for this yet however the truth is from what i've read the, they are actually building some of the games from the ground up to work on this device so i'm gonna grab i'm uh, just grabbing all my gate boxes of games so i bought this on an ebay auction and i think i probably paid market rate for it what I think uh, there's a deal at a website, and I'll put that in the comments. Uh, in January 2021, they're doing either the three pack bundle or the 10 game bundle, and you get a free game of your choice. Outstanding value for money. The 10 game bundle, I think, is £160. Bear in mind, the game's about £15 each. Plus, you get a bonus game. So that's 11 games. That's £165 in games, and you're getting essentially the free console. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, back to the Evercade again. They are Blaze have contacted the people who own the IP and said, "We want to release some of your games." And they discuss them and they get into uh, negotiations, and eventually something will get agreed. And that gives us. Let's start with cartridge number one, the Atari Collection. Now, it's not for everybody. I mean, the Atari. I'm looking at this. Twenty Atari classics for the Evercade. Uh, 7800, 2600 Ataris. And for games that you'll remember, Missile Command is on there. Asteroids is on there. Centipede is on there. I mean, these are... You have heard of those games. Tempest is on there. Ooh, Tempest. Video Pinball. And a few others. Ninja Golf. I haven't played Ninja Golf yet. It's saying new. That's interesting. But yeah, I... Uh, this is the first one. Now, the, the pack that I got the bonus pack, which came with three free games, plus there were some other games included. So, uh, for whatever I paid, I got six games. And I was like, okay, well, these are plenty to go through. So, number one, Atari. And I've reeled off a couple of the Atari games you'd have definitely heard of. Number two, Namco. And I mean, slap bang in the middle there. You're not going to miss Mr. Yellow. Pack Packus Manus. You got Pac Man, you got Dig Dug, uh, let's have a look. What else do I know? Galaxi Galaxian. I mean, classic games. The kind of things that, if you had them on your phone and you were on a, like, a 15 minute tube journey or bus journey or whatever, you'd crack out one of them. I mean, I must admit, I, can't, I struggle to get into Pac Man nowadays. I just don't. But. Uh, shoot them up, Got to, can't go wrong with that. So, this one here, the Namco Museum Collection 1. Uh, let's have a look, six, 11 games on that one. So, 20 on the first, the Atari one. Then, the uh, so let me I'll put this down for a second. I think I may have showed you before, but I'll use the uh, Namco example. Uh, good things about the Evercade games, all on cartridge, they are not for digital download. Uh, I've read a couple of interviews with the MK team and about what they're trying to do. And one of the things they wanted to do was to make something a bit more kind of switch off. So you, you're you not connected to internet. So I've, I've got a few games for my iPhone where you can't play them unless they're connected to the internet. 
They don't need to, but it's so that they can send you adverts, track your data, all of that stuff. Sorry, I'll drink some tea there. And uh, the nice thing about the, what the Evercade's done is everything's on the cartridge. So you don't have to be connected to the internet. It saves your battery life, but also kind of it's it's what you want, isn't it? You, you don't need to go on the internet. You don't need dynamic adverts. You, if the game's on the cartridge, you just want to play it. If the game's on my phone, I just want to play it. I don't want to have to worry about going through a tunnel and then losing connection. So what, Ever, uh, what Blaze have done is they've created uh, their own cartridges which fit in the back of the device but they've also created these little new boxes so they're not uh because they've created their own cartridge they could start from scratch but these aren't mega drive size these aren't game boy size these aren't you know, these are designed for people who want the evercade console just to play so if i open it up what have you got so this side you've got do you remember do you, do you remember when you used to get little booklets introduction to namco and then a little bit about how to play games and then the controls but also the games themselves i mean it's absolutely i mean it's not it's not the highest quality no one's going to pretend that it is but there's a little manual that you get i mean there's nothing you couldn't find out about any one of these games with a google search but what's nice is this is in there as part now you perhaps want two of them up and top and bottom but keeps cost down to only having one i guess and then there's the cartridge so that's the uh, let me get that. that's the so namco museum collection one and then that so you've got and the way they sit in the case is to display the colorful side so i think if i flip that go that way I think they've put a lot of effort in here and I, I really appreciate that so yeah so we've done uh, Namco Collection 1 now here here's one that was interesting Data East uh, I'll read you off the list of Data East games Bad Dudes Burger Time Midnight Renaissance Resistance Side Pocket Karate Champ Joe and Mac 2 Fighters History Two Crude Dudes. Sounds like a game I'd like. Two Crude Dudes. Magical Drop 2. I didn't play Magical Drop. And Burning Rubber. So we've got 10 games on this. This is a collection of 8 and 16-bit games. So you saw from the first one, the first two, they seem very much kind of like really early 8-bit kind of gaming. We're getting another 16-bit gaming on here. I only am aware of one of these games, and that's Joe and Mac, and I'm pretty certain... Joe and Mac was a uh, a side platformer with a caveman. But this was included in the bundle I bought on eBay, which was boxed and it had everything in it. Next up, we've got Interplay. Now, now we start to... This actually leads me on to part of the purpose of the Evercade. This wasn't in my collection that I bought. But in reading up on the Evercade and the, an interview with the team at Blaze, they said they wanted to create something that people coming to gaming now could collect and uh, could collect affordably, but also people would want to collect them. With the push now, with the Switch and with the PlayStation, um, I mean, PlayStations, with all console gaming, there's such a push to go digital only such a push and people are missing out on great games because when you log out of my playstation the games don't work so what the team of blaze wanted to do was create something that people could collect and it wouldn't break the bank so this like the others i mean some of these can be had from i think amazon one of them or two of them were dropped out of 12 quid 14.99 from lots of other retailers as well but 14.99 and and after i read about kind of the this the mission statement the goal what the what the team at blaze uh, would try to do with the evercade which is make a portable handheld console that people want to play that would allow people such as myself older gamers to reminisce on the games they used to play uh, and uh, do it affordably 
This is what they're trying to do. And so I thought, well, do you know what? I've already got six cartridges. Why don't I just try and build up my collection? I think to date there might be... I think I saw they've just released... They've just announced cart 16 and 17, or 17 and 18, which is Worms, a Worms collection, which would be great. I mean, Worms was just fantastic to play. Uh, and I can't remember what the other one is, so apologies for that. Uh, this interplay collection, so I ordered this. Uh, what I've decided to do is I'm going to pick up one of these a month, unless they, unless one for some reason drops in price. But yeah, so if I pick up one a month, that will be my collection done in a year. Uh, and so far, they've all got stuff that I could be interested in. So this one, uh, interplay games I've heard of. Clay Fighter, I remember that. That was a. Oh, I want to say, no, it's not. Hang on. They they did a lot of effort on the animation on Clay Fighter. And I'm trying to remember if they did animated stick figures and built them out or did actual uh, physical animation and used that as, as a thing. I can't remember. But the other one from here is Earthworm Jim. And hey, <coughs> everybody my age would have played Earthworm Jim at some point. Groovy. Uh, yeah, on here, Battle, Battle Chess. I think while it secondary school i played a hooky version of that boogerman never heard of it incantation and titan so six games on this one but two at least two if not what well, sorry at least one if not two games you probably have heard of i mean it's 16 15 quid six games what's that just under three quid a game yeah i mean it's great that people the people who have made these are still getting paid on it or oh, whoever owns the, the ip i suppose uh, next up is the Atari Collection 2. Ooh, we bashed his screen. So we've got another 20 games, a uh, mixture of 2,600 and 7,800 games. Uh, you'll see Airsea Battle, Yard's Revenge, Sprint Master, Submarine Commander. I mean, yeah, 20 games, 15 quid, that's like... You'd pay more to buy one of these off the Apple uh, App Store. I mean, yeah, so so there we are. So this is uh, cart five. And we've got cart six. Ah, Namco, Namco Museum Collection 2. So what we got here, we have Pack Attack. I don't remember that. Gallagher. We've got Warp Man. Dig Dug 2, didn't complete Dig Dug, hope I can still follow the storyline. Uh, the Tower of Dragula, Burning Force, Felos, Weapon Lords, Dragon Spirit, The New Legend, Splathouse 2 and Splathouse 3. So I busted this one out the other day because I was chatting with a chum of mine and he is playing Splatterhouse 2 uh, on another setup. Uh, not on an Evercade. And I thought, I'd never heard of Splatterhouse, but he was saying it was great. I tell you what, I had a lot of fun playing Splatterhouse too. The, uh, uh, a lot of fun. So, so two, five, six, 11 games on the Namco Museum Collection 2. You're paying, once again, less than a quid a game. Nope, just over a quid a game for them. Or oh, Peggy rated 16, so be careful. Whereas the Atari Collection, Peggy rated 12. So yeah, that's that's cart number six. And then the last one we've got is the Pico collection. Now, once again, I will read you these out and you can tell me whether you recognise them. Switchblade, Dragon View, Top Breacher, Power Punch 2, uh, Brave Battle Saga, Eight Eyes, Nightshade, Radical Rex, The Human, Dorkin Yimp, uh, Magic Girl, Water Margin, Iron Commando, Draken, Tin Head, the Immortal, Power Pigs of the Dark Age, Canon, Legend of the New Gods, Way of the Exploding Fist, and Jim Power, The Lost Dimensions. They don't mean anything to me, but these, these were included. And this is cart number nine. This was the final cart from the six that were included. And once again, I mean, I'll just open it up. You've got your cartridge. And then you've got your little book. I mean, I just hope they're able to make more there's all sorts of rumors online about 
what's coming up next. As I said, they've literally, like this week, have announced uh, Worms as a collection. So, uh, yeah, lots more coming. Uh, February's not far away, so I can treat myself to the next one in the series. And, yeah, I think if you're a, if you're a person who wants to get into console gaming and wants to get in at the start on something that's legitimate, I think this would be a great way to do it. <sighs> Buy yourself a Game Boy if you want, and you could pick up, what were they called, R4 carts or something. I'm going back however many decades it was uh, when you used to be able to go. So you used to be able to get like 121 in one cart for the Game Boy. And then with the Nintendo DS. Was it the Nintendo DS? Yeah, they had a uh, an R4i cart or something like that where you could download ROMs and play games off ROMs. I think it's a long time ago before I was doing that stuff or when I was doing that stuff. Uh, and now I just have no interest in it no interest in having all the ROMs uh, I'm picking up stuff that I'm interested in I want to try and play stuff uh, ideally unfortunately we just had Christmas a lot of money gone money 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 uh, so plans I've got is to get the ability to stream some of my games into this but also on Twitch do some of the retro stuff I've got to at some point in the next few months move my room around so I'll be moving back into what was my original study. I can't wait. I won't have a bed in there like this bad boy, so I might be able to set it up a bit, maybe get a sofa bed or something more comfortable in there. But what I'll be able to do is uh, get an HDMI switch, have lots of stuff plugged in, and I'll be able to game, film it, and show you some of the games that I've just talked about. I could show you the great thing that made me chuckle so much in Splatterhouse 2. That's the plan, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, so what can I final things I can tell you about the old Evercade? He says getting himself back in shot because he's a narcissist. Where is he? Where is that lovely gentleman? There he is. Hiya. Yeah, things I can tell you about the Evercade. Uh, it comes if you buy it brand new and you get all the accessories. It comes with an HDMI output. There it is. Uh, done at the top. Uh, I don't know if I'd have preferred it. It probably allows for a, a shorter, slightly shorter cable. Uh, and it maybe hot coats with that a bit better. Uh, the one thing I will say, and it's obviously won't affect everybody. There he is. Uh, won't affect everybody. Is that the uh, they've they've updated the firmware on this a few times as they're trying to improve stuff and make things better. They're on firmware version one point three. Well, one point three one. However, it is currently only Windows only, so I can't update mine yet because I've got a Mac and I don't have a Windows computer to download the software to. So I'm a bit behind. There's talk of them. Uh, they're saying January the Mac software should be ready available for doing the updates for you. And then I'll get this updated. And I can't wait. I really do. I mean, same size screen as a feature, I think. I mean, what I could do is I could go get my Vita and show you, but I won't. It is. I might do that a separate video, screen size. Yeah. I've got going to have a great video coming up for you next, maybe next video, second next video. I've got a great unboxing of something I've ordered this week. Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, I was on the lookout for something and ended up buying something else. So just so you're aware, what I was on the lookout for is I really wanted a NES released, no, sorry, let me say, a Game Boy Advance SP, but in the NES colours, they did a special one, 30th anniversary. I have struggled to find one in a decent condition with a box. I never had one, but I've completed my collection of all the stuff I've had. So now I'm after stuff I don't have. Uh, I was eyeing up Lynxes, Atari Lynxes. Great. Great link back to the Evercade. Uh, I'm up Atari Lynxes. I never had one, but I thought it'd be cool to, to pick one up. Uh, but carts 12 and 13 or 11 or 12 or something like that for the Evercade are two Lynx collections. Two separate cartridges with different Lynx games on. Uh, the reason I really want a Lynx is I want to play Cal Games, sorry, California Games on the Lynx. 
because on the Lynx it was different to the PC version. And I played the PC version a lot growing up. Uh, everything apart from... Struggling to remember which one didn't work. Maybe it was the... Uh, Maybe it was the uh, surfing. Yeah, one of the games we had on the PC, one of the California games didn't work correctly. I can't remember which one it was. But, yeah, so, so 140, 150 quid for a boxed Atari Lynx at the moment. It's a lot of money. Whereas 160 quid will buy you this, brand new, plus 10 cartridges, Plus an additional cartridge of your choice from I think they're called UK, sorry, Fun Stock Fun House UK. Oh, I'll put the link in. You'll see it. But it's only for January, so you get the bonus game is essentially worth about fifteen quid, uh, and you get you start your collection off. You've got ten, it's eleven cartridges. They've only got nineteen or twenty at the go, so you're already halfway there. But I've got a way to go. This is not a sprint; it is a marathon. Uh, and it's enjoyable so I like to be able to play the games I do want to try and do a bit more game playing uh, and hopefully I'll be able to get some more done this evening but yeah this is it the Evercade unboxing and I've told you my plan let's start collecting the cartridges for this uh, and I think do you know what because they're legitimate cartridges these are going to be collectors things in 20 years time because either this is going to take off and shoot up and they'll release a new version of this that will start being able to play other games. I don't think they need to. I mean, it's got six buttons. So this will take it up to the uh, snares. This will take it up to the uh, PlayStation 1. Does the PlayStation 2 have two shoulder buttons? I cannot remember. But essentially, I think they can play, if they can sort out the software, this is quite a powerful little handheld. And although it's uh, got a lot of Atari 8-bit stuff on there, I think this can do some stuff. So they'll probably release a new one. Uh, Rumours are they might be doing a home console version. I don't even know if the home console version would be worth it for me. Uh, but, as I said, I'm really chuffed with this. And uh, next time I do a long journey, I'll chuck in a couple of games, put my headphones on. And I'm going to really blast through them. So yeah, there's the Evercade. Uh, treat yourself or don't. I mean, you can pick it up from Amazon if you want, uh, but it's not the best deal at the moment. Best deal, the place I'll link to. Uh, I don't get any money if you buy it from the place where you get the best deal, but it's more important to get the best deal sometimes. It's not all about the money, money, money. Oh, I should have stopped all of these videos about five minutes before I do. Because otherwise I start singing Jesse J songs. Oh, I'm an idiot. So yeah, Evercade by Blaze Entertainment. Got any questions? Put them in the comments below. I really will try. I oh, see. He's all about the money. I can't show you any of the games. I need to get that set up sorted. Because I could get a little box up, box up here. And then flip between the two. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Any questions give me a shout if you're having problems with it or difficulties with it there were problems with some of the button mappings and some of the games that's been fixed uh with the firmware updates so don't if, if you heard bad things about it to start with don't worry about it viewing angles aren't as great as perhaps you'd want but they're not shocking sound wise sound on mine's been fine lots of people have said they've had a few issues with sound i haven't uh it doesn't have two, two player pe capabilities or the ability to link I don't think it will but because the games are based on the originals some of the games do offer two player so don't get your hopes up or think there's a secret two player mode or you can do some form of console link you can't so yeah any questions drop me a comment below but this is the Evercade by Blaze you should check it out and you see my unboxing video that's probably going to come up later Anyway, this is the Reverend uh, yammering on for half an hour as he normally does. Uh, look after yourselves, keep yourself nice, and uh, check out my other videos. Toodle pip. Bye! <laughs>
tea unboxing videos, I've just got unboxing videos, I've got all sorts of stuff that you can go watch. They'll appear on this screen. Check them out, have a watch. I'm sure you'll enjoy them, they're great.